Hello everybody, welcome back to Minister Bill's Bible reading, but scripture reading, but today, and it's so much easier, I think I'm going to read from the book called One Minute Devotion, Grace for Today. Uh, it's a book I got at the Bible store, and it's a good book. It's, it's backed up by a scripture, and it's there you could read a book. You know, a, 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 a page, and it's you know it describes. You know, it goes each month. It describes um, the Bible or it's, it's a scripture, and it, it, it breaks it down. What's going on? How they what it breaks down on the scripture, whatever. Um, I'm in January 9th. Um, but we could go to um, January 5th is a good one and it says an open door this is Revelations 3 8 see I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut and you know it's Jesus in Revelations 3 8 and I'll go to the Bible and Revela Revelations 3 8 and, um, a lot of, you know, a lot of people do, you know, a lot of churches, a lot of, but I'm li listening on TV, are fearing Revelations, and I don't fear Revelations. Revelations not, we learn a lot from Revelations, what's going on in the world today. You know, we need to know what's going on in Revelations. Revelations 3, 8. Okay, Revelations 3, 8. And Jesus spoke 3 8 I know I know your work see I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it for you have little strength have kept my word I have not denied my word and have not denied my name so those have not denied Jesus name of course you know, Jesus, of course, is going to keep, you know, a door open for, for you know, his heart. You know, he's have, of course, we keep, you know, a door open for him. That's how I'm, I'm perceiving this um, in 3.8. Um, and I believe that's what that means. You know, Jesus has a door open for us. Those who are weak, you know, is, you know spiritually weak. And these flashlights, sometimes the batteries, these are perfect little lights, uh, called ultra fire little lights batteries, but I don't want to get into that. Um, and actually, in Ch Revelations chapter 3, um, the church, the, it's called the Dead Church, and um, I'm going to read a little bit about that, and it gets into the whole scripture. And the angel of the church, and the Satyrs write, These things say, He who has seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know it, your works that I have named, that you are alive but are, in, are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that already die, already to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember therefore how we have received and heard, hold f fast and repent. Therefore if you will not watch I will come upon you as a thief and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. So you know it just basically tells you what's coming on, you know, and it comes up to verse 8, you know, you know um, I know your work, see, I have set before you an open door. So that's an invitation to God, it's from Jesus, that he's opening a door for us, you know, he has a door open for us, he's, 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 he's um, here, he's, you know, come to him right now, because time is, time is short, we don't, tomorrow's not guaranteed, today, today, 
is, is uh, you know, it's, it's, it's special. We got today, but tomorrow, even tonight, is not guaranteed. So repent, come to Jesus, repent of your sins, accept Christ in your heart, and have faith as, as, small, as, a, uh, as small as a monster seed, he says. Okay, getting on this. Constant grumblings make life seems meaning meaningless. It doesn't take someone who lives like long to develop a negative, cynical attitude towards life. But Christ wants so much more for us. Scripture, history, and personal experience all offers ample testimony to the fact that ordinary seemingly meaningless life can be transferred by the power of the living Christ and through his Holy Spirit. So, you know, we have negative, we're always grumbling, life it seems life is meaningfully meaningless and it doesn't take someone who lives like this long to develop a negative and cynical attitude towards life. Don't do that. Come to Christ. It's nice. He's here. God's here for us. Jesus is here for us. It, it's, you know, we're human. Of course we're going to have this. But when we get these thoughts, pray to Him. Come to God and say, Lord, you know, I'm having a, a bad day. Sorry for that, folks. You know, I'm having a bad moment. You know, please, please help me out. You know, so don't, don't have a cynical cynical attitude towards life but Christ so much more but Christ wants so much more for us scripture scripture history and personal experience all offers ample testimony to the fact or that seemingly meaningless life can be transformed by the power of the living Christ through his Holy Spirit so we know the Holy Spirit of Christ. We can come to Him and we can be transformed into so much better, so much happiness and spiritual. We could be in so much just in so much positive and live in a spiritual connection with God. You know, we could, we could have such a good outlook on life. The new life of abundance that Christ offers you and yours for the taking. Turn to Christ and he will open the door to a new meaningful life for you. So there you go. Turn to Christ and he has a meaningful life for us. You know, he has a door open for us. He's, he's here. He has a door. Like he said, you know, he has his hands on a cross. He has his hands spread out in both hands. You know, his hands are wide open, and he says, Come on to me, my, you know, I, well, it, of course, his hands crossed. He says, How much I love you from hand to hand. I tell you how much he loves you, but he also means, you know, Come to me, my door is open. I have a door for you. My door is open. My heart is open for you. Come to me. You're, you know, um, through his Holy Spirit, through God, his Father. You know, he's here for that. And this is, this is, part of him. This is awesome. You know, it, it's, it's simple. He offers you for the taking. You know, turn to Christ. He will open the door to a new meaningful life for you us. And then, of course, uh, I apologize for the prayer, but at the end of prayer, it says, Lord Jesus, the open door of your grace leads me into the abundance and joy of life in your presence, which is awesome leads abundance of joy and of life in your presence. And we will in Jesus, as we pray every day in Jesus, to have abundance of life and joy in Jesus every day. It changes us and, have, and the spirit of Jesus living in, in, in prayer and, 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 and positive and the, the, you know, not the negative and not the grumbling you know, when you have a negative or you're around people who are negative all the time and don't care about Jesus and don't care about God, you know, they bring you down and they want to, sorry about that, they want to live in a, such a uh, 
negative way, it brings you down, it makes you feel like crap, right? It makes you feel lucky. But when you lucky, I'm sorry, crappy. But when Jesus gives his grace, Jesus' grace has abundance of joy of life in his presence. Well, it gives us a new purpose in meeting today. Amen. Amen to that because he's here. He's, when you you know when you pray, when you're feeling bad and upset, his abundance of his love and joy of life brings it back to a, a wonderful, graceful love and love for him and life for him. Doesn't Amen. So thank you for that one. So I want to read another one. I'd like to you know feel do another one. Um and these all really go together. Um I go today, um uh, and I've run this I read this book, this is probably my third year I went to this book, so I started kinda of in the middle of the book and then I went through the whole book and then I'll start the book the whole book again all over again. Um Get to another, maybe another page. Um, okay, here's another one. Here, this is going John 13:34. Instruments of God's love. A new, a new commandment. I give. Love, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. John 13:34. So we know that, you know, love one another. As I love you, so we must love one another. You know, brotherly love. You know, we love one another. Let's love one. Another. Let's love each other. Let's have peace and love and joy in God through God. So, Lord, I do want to thank you. I want to for prayer. I'm sorry, Lord. Thank you. Take these words and feed us with the knowledge and give us wisdom to these words, guide us towards your life with the abundance of life, abundance of joy, and just guide us to where we need to be in life. And these words, these scriptures I read you, and these little stories I read you, Lord, read out loud, have some impact to people who might listen to this channel, that know that you're easy to come to, and that you're a loving God and a merciful God, and these scriptures will help people understand how loving and kind and caring you are. 